This is Frank Eslam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, our guest is Kathleen Murphy. Kathleen is running for Virginia House of Delegates. We want to wish her good luck. We want to know a little bit about her background and also want to know why she's running for election. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Frank. You're most welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, tell me a little about yourself. And as I, as I understand, your military background have shaped your history, your destiny. <laughs> our mothers shape our destinies. <laughs> okay, so tell me a little bit about your childhood. Tell me a little bit about your, yourself and tell me why you're running for election and what's your message? Why should people vote for you? So I have five questions. It's all loaded. Oh, that is a loaded question. Um, I, I grew up in a military family. I'm one of seven children. Um, my parents taught us to love and honor our country and to give back because we've been given so much. My mother believed that all of us had a responsibility to help others. And so she made us go out and work for families who were needy in our community. And she always said at the end of every day, you know, I know you did a good job today, but tomorrow we can do better. And so I sort of have lived my life that way, trying to give to my community. I am running because when I moved to Virginia over 20 years ago with my children, I came I, here. I understand you have six kids. Well, I have four of my own, and I married a lovely man who has two children. So we have one boy and five girls all together. So which you is understand quite a how to raise child, which is very important in this community, and also education is very important. Yes, so I want to talk is. about some of those issues. Uh, go ahead. Well, I, I don't, I mean, I moved here for the quality of life and so my kids could attend the public schools. And what I see now is that we have a delegate who, who doesn't vote for the interests of the, the community so that we live in. So she's not a true representation of the community's, uh, uh, what the community is looking for. No, she isn't. In she, fact, she. I think she, she threatens our quality of life by the votes she takes. She has voted against education funding. She has voted against transportation funding, and she has voted for the gun lobby instead of to protect our families from gun violence. These are important issues. And no question about it. It's not only the issues in Northern Virginia. Virginia, this is issue as a nation issues. Yes, they are national issues. So, no question about that. So what is your message to the community? If you have to say in two minutes, why should people vote for Kathleen Murphy? What would you say? Well, I would tell them that I believe strongly that we deserve better representation. We deserve a, a delegate who will go, who will tell you the truth here and go and vote and represent you in Richmond, and I will do that. I will not have a different message when I'm in the northern part of uh, Virginia than I will have when I, when I go down to Richmond. I'll vote for transportation solutions and education funding, and I will vote for our children every time over gun lobbyists. Very well said. Uh, uh, that's, that's the, and I would like you to consider voting for, for Kathleen and because she will represent your community very well. So we want to shift our gear and talk a little bit about the public education. How do you make the education more affordable, more accessible to all the people in this community, regardless of who they are, and especially the middle class who have been left behind? Well, the, the good part, the wonderful part about our education in Virginia is, is that it's, it's good. It's good, it's solid, and it needs our support. You need to build upon it. We do. We do. And we need to understand that our teachers need to be paid better. Uh, we need to respect the job that they're doing, and uh, we need to pay them better. And the payment has to come from the state. Of course it does. And which but is the taxpayers. Comes, that comes from us. We all pay that right now. That isn't going to change. So tell me a little bit about the transportation in, uh, in uh, something called TRAP. You are here about the TRIP. So tell me a little bit about what do you think. Well, TRAP is, uh, TRAP is are the clinics that that uh, provide medical. Oh, that's right. I forgot all about it. It's not, it has nothing to do with the transportation. That's right. I missed the mark completely. I apologize for that's that. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, tell me a little bit about the TRAP then. TRAP, um, there are clinics around Virginia that provide basic medical care for to the women, poor, to the needy, to the poor and the needy. needy in rural areas. And these clinics have been, uh, have been burdened with regulations that really were made for hospitals. 
And women in rural areas are in desperate need of, of these kinds of clinics to remain open because it gives them basic health care, it gives them cancer screenings, and when you close them, these women lose access to Do they have a funding from the state or, the, or from the county? Yes, uh, they do. They do have a funding. Is that a full-fledged funding or that comes from, I, I from the public, know, no. from the contributions of the various individuals as well, or the various? Uh, that part I don't know. Okay. So you mentioned about the gun control. Yes. And the gun control lobbyist is pretty strong, especially the NRAs. <laughs> now, they, I thought they would pass the bill in the Senate, but they did not. No. Uh, but it is also in our Constitution to possess firearms in yes. some cases. Now, how, what's your thoughts on gun controls and gun violence in this, in this country? And for that matter, in your community. And what would you do about it when you get to Richmond? Well, Frank, for me, this is a personal issue because I lost my brother to gun violence. He was murdered when robbers entered his place of business and shot him. And so I don't, I don't think any family should have to experience this kind of tragedy. And, I, and, and especially following Newtown, we don't think our children should be subjected to the threat of gun violence like that. So I strongly support uh, prevention methods you know, to protect our community and our children from gun violence. Um, my opponent does not, and she votes with the gun lobby. Especially in our race? Yes. So do you think there's a little a dimmer of hope uh, in, maybe in the, in the Senate that the, that the gun, uh, safe gun controls uh, will probably be passed? Well, it, we're not looking for gun control. We're looking for oh, gun, gun safety, safety measures. Correct. You're we're absolutely right. for gun safety measures. And, and it, when people will step back and understand that gun safety measures don't threaten our Second Amendment rights, but they do keep our children and our communities and our families safe, I think that the attitude will change. That's our hope. That's our hope. The United States has always been the worst best hope, as President Lincoln said in 19, 1852. Well, and Lincoln our, was a wise man. He was a wise man. Let's talk about your service in the Fairfax County Human Services Councils and Healthcare. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, I was appointed to the uh, Human Services Council over five years ago by Supervisor John Faust. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful supervisor. and. On the, on the Human Services Council, it's our job to look at the budgets that come in and to acknowledge the, the cuts that we will be facing and try and um, advise the supervisors on the way to approach these budget cuts in a way that hurts the fewest people uh, or the fewest programs. And some, uh, some of these programs have broader support in the community that they can step back and rely on that when, uh, when community funding is removed or is, or, or is cut back. And so that's our job is just to be advisors on these issues. So, for, so you have a good experience serving the community and you want to take this community service to the next level, which is me running for the election for the House of Delegates. That's right. And, and that's your message. Yes, it is. I you have the experience. To the quality of life that we have by supporting transportation solutions that make sense, supporting funding for our schools, supporting women's rights, supporting- Against violence? You bet, against- Absolutely violence. right. Absolutely. And, and supporting uh, sensible gun violence prevention. Well, the last thing that I want to talk to you about, your Attorney General, uh, you live in the uh, state of yes. uh, Virginia, about the uh, Obamacare, also known as Affordable Health Care. He took, he took the Obama to the court, to the Supreme Court. What's your thoughts on Obamacare is and Affordable Health Care Act is? Well, I think we should have Medicaid expansion. I support it absolutely. And I think the only thing that Cuccinelli did by, by taking it to court was to spend taxpayer money that should And wasted it. And, and completely wasted it. Completely. it. And you should have used that, utilized that money properly in education, educating our children. They can, we can create a next generation in this country. We could have done a lot of good things with that money, and it all went, it went for nothing. And it, all it did was make us the laughing stock of late night television. That's the best way to, to describe it. Yeah, that's what he does best. Very well. And, uh, and the thing which is going on with the Governor McDonald is not very uh, good either. It's disappointing, isn't it? Very disappointing. And dismay. We are dismayed, uh, especially. But he's a good man, uh, uh, Governor McDonald. I've known him for many years. He's a good guy. 
So let's just talk a little bit about the uh, the fact that the that you care about all these issues and you, and especially this thing. Do you have a full time job as well. So how do you intend to do? And you got a kids to take care of. That how, and and you're basically a typical mother who wants to do a lot of things well, and who has a lot of passion, a lot of commitment, a lot, but doesn't have too much time. So how did you go about doing that? And what would you advise the people who wants to do the same thing? Well, you know, I'm a great multitasker. Maybe that's that's. So how you're well I, disciplined. Yeah, I am. I'm well disciplined. You have to be when you have raised as many children as I have. Um, I I th I am committed. I'm committed to the people of my community, I'm committed to my family, and I'm committed to Virginia. Uh, I really think we deserve better. I think we deserve a, a delegate who doesn't say, you know, give us one story here in Northern Virginia and go to Richmond and vote against us. And that's what we have right it's now. It's a double talk. It's double talk and I'm running against it. Well, thank you very much uh, uh, for your service to our community. And good luck to you, as you, you. Do, as you undertake this new and solemn journey. And uh, hopefully you will win. And uh, hopefully you will serve our community well. And, and what you do, we admire and appreciate what Thank you, you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important for all of us to participate uh, in this process. The last question that I have for you, why people should participate in political process? Why do they give money? <laughs> people should give money so that, that not only the Koch brothers get to uh, well, yeah, you're absolutely right. Own the political process. You know, in order to win an election, you have to have money. It's a it's a sad fact, but it is the fact. It's and the reality. It is the reality, and so we need financial support and enable uh, to enable us to run an effective campaign. Well, it's also important uh, that politics define the landscape of America. This is how you participate in democracy, to make sure your voices are heard, to make sure you have a seat on the table. That's right. There are only 38,855 people in this country give about more than $1,000 political contribution. That's a statistic. That's a sad story. We must all contribute and participate in the process. Well, thank you for coming. We appreciate your time. Thank you so and much. And your talent, your energy, what you do for our country, for our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week and thank you for watching.